Hi, I'm Rachel, and I'm here to do a booktube spin TBR. <laughs> you might be wondering, if you're watching this video uh, relatively close to when I'm posting it, why I'm doing a booktube spin TBR right now. Because the booktube spin was started by Rick McDonnell, wherein he asked uh, people to uh, make a list of 20 books that they wanted to read, uh, and then he would do a spinny thing, <laughs> as I called it, uh, basically going to an online site where you can spin a wheel, and then he'd pick a random number, and then people would read the book uh, that corresponded to that number. And uh, he did that <laughs> back in uh, late January, I believe he picked number 15, and people have uh, February and March to read that book. Uh, so if he does another spinny thing, he won't be doing it uh, at least for another month. <laughs> so why should I be making a list now? <laughs> and the only uh, reasons I have are, I guess, FOMO and uh, excitement. <laughs> I figured why not do it now? <laughs> And hopefully when Rick does another spinny thing, I can go ahead and use this video and uh, find another way to add another book to my TBR. <laughs> I really do love the idea of these spontaneous games. Uh, for the past uh, several months, I've been doing the page 112 tag, uh, wherein I um, choose a book on my physical shelves uh, to add to my TBR based off of uh, picking three random uh, titles out of a cup I have, <laughs> and then pitting page 112 against each other. Uh, so yeah, it's it's fun. Um, but with that in mind, uh, in uh, comprising a list of 20 books for the booktube spin, I decided not to go with any of my physical books, because <laughs> they're all accounted for, basically, in another spontaneous little game. <laughs> but what Rick encouraged participants to do was uh, to create basically four categories of five books a piece um, based off of some criteria, uh, just to, I guess to keep the list diverse or as diverse as you can. And so I decided to tackle my TBR lists because I tend to have a lot of them. It's sort of a river's uh, flow to the ocean so sort of uh, scenario uh, where my Goodreads TBR uh, is the major one. Uh, basically, when books make that TBR, I would love to say that I'm definitely going to read them. <laughs> and every year, in fact, uh, I make myself some sort of uh, goal to read the top books on my Goodreads TBR. So this year, uh, I'm reading all the books that I put on that list in 2016. <laughs> Uh, and I also keep my Goodreads TBR relatively short, because I want to say that I can read all these books. So I always keep the number at 90, and every time I subtract a book from my TBR, I have those rivers that I can add a new one uh, to, from. <laughs> I primarily add from my Amazon wishlist or my Litzy TBR. <laughs> I use Amazon uh, for my Jewish fiction books. Uh, whenever a book of Jewish interest uh, catches my fancy, I put it on my Amazon uh, wish list. <laughs> and whenever a book of general fiction catches my fancy, I tend to put it on the Litzy list. <laughs> so yeah, my uh, Goodreads TBR is primarily uh, made up of uh, Jewish and general fiction, <laughs> with, with a couple of other types of titles thrown in. I'd like to uh, be adding in more science fiction and fantasy. And in fact, uh, on my Overdrive page for one of my library accounts, I occasionally add in uh, sci-fi and fantasy books to the recommended uh, list, uh, mostly for audiobooks. I recommend them as audiobooks that, of course, the library rarely, if ever, you know, takes me up on. But <laughs> sometimes they do, and then I can at least listen to them on audio <laughs> from the library. <laughs> But anyway, what I'm trying to uh, relay in all of this ramble is that these are my four lists that I will be picking books from. I have my Goodreads TBR list, which I'll be picking from the end of it rather than the beginning, because I already uh, <laughs> am going to be reading, hopefully, all of my top uh, books, uh, you know, one through whatever uh, this year anyway. Uh, then I also have my Litzy TBR of general fiction, my Amazon TBR of Jewish fiction, and then my Overdrive TBR of SFF. <laughs> 
So now I'll go through and talk about each of the 20 books in a little more detail. I'm kind of excited about this part. I went ahead and made little graphics to overlay uh, right now. Uh, I made them on PowerPoint <laughs> and then, you know, took a screenshot and so forth. <laughs> you know, this is all very rudimentary, but it's the first time I've done uh, this particular setup, so I'm excited. <laughs> so without further ado. Okay, book number one is About the Night by Anat Talshir and translated by Evan Fallenberg. This is a uh, book that takes place in Israel around uh, the founding of the state. In fact, it takes place in Jerusalem, which at the time was a divided city between Israel and Jordan. And it's kind of your standard uh, Romeo and Juliet type of story of uh, two lovers who find themselves uh, on antagonistic sides of history. So we have um, a Christian Arab, Elias, who falls in love with, uh, with Lila, who is a, an Israeli Jewish woman. <laughs> Book number two is actually similar uh, to that. Uh, it's an Egyptian novel uh, by Orly Castel Bloom and translated by Todd Hasek Lowy. It is another um, Israeli book about a Jewish family with uh, ties in Egypt that go back a way long time. Uh, I think uh, the father's side of the family uh, arrived in Egypt after the 1492 expulsion of Jews from Spain, and the mother's side has been there since antiquity. And again, I think this book uh, takes place in 1948 when the family immigrates to Israel. Uh, so I think a lot of that other stuff might be just back story stuff, and we might the present might be the focus, I'm not sure, but I was excited uh, to get that uh, sort of uh, provenance uh, in fiction, and I believe this is also um, based on Castell Bloom's um, actual family, at least in part. Book three is Miss Burma by Charmaine Craig, and this is a book that uh, I put on my Jewish list because I'm sure I found it on the Jewish Book Council site, and it does have some minor Jewish content in that it is a, about a Burmese family in Burma with some Jewish ancestry in the background of it. But I don't know exactly how much uh, Judaism will play a part in this book, so uh, it might be something after reading it that I'll ultimately have to change over to general fiction. But for now, I have it in Jewish fiction. And finally, my last two books on this list are actually YA, and might also be relatively minor when it comes to Jewish expression. But the first one is The Most Dangerous Thing by Leanne Lieberman, and I believe it is a coming-of-age story, a sexual awakening sort of story, for a 16-year-old girl named Sydney who might have Holocaust-surviving grandparents. And the second one is called Subject to Change by Karen Nesbitt, and this is about a male protagonist who I believe is struggling with uh, the fact of his parents' divorce. Next group, okay, we start with The Archive of Alternate Endings by Lindsay Drager. Uh, this is a book that uh, I believe is about a fairy tale, well, about Hansel and Gretel specifically, a retelling of that fairy tale, although it doesn't take place in a fantastical world, I think. It takes place in our world and uh, sort of retells the provenance of that fairy tale and then how it changed over increments of 75 years. Uh, a time, uh, and it, in fact, uh, this ultimately becomes a science fiction book because um, some of the later chapters are definitely in our future. <laughs> but I decided to put it on this list rather than my SFF list because it's primarily about literary themes and, and about this fairy tale rather than about uh, society specifically and technology specifically, I think. Uh, although I might end up uh, labeling this a speculative fiction book, not sure. Ask Again Yes by Mary Beth Keene, I believe, is my quintessential brand of literary fiction. It is family suburban drama, uh, interfamily suburban drama, you know, to keep a wider cast of characters, and I am here for it. <laughs> then we have Hardly Children by Laura Adamczyk, which I'm excited is here because it is a short story collection, and I like to uh, read some of those occasionally. That being said, it does seem to be magical realist short stories, and I don't know why I always add those, because I think I'd much rather have just realist, realist uh, short stories, but I put this on my list, and now I'm going to see if I like it. Next, we go to a dystopian book, Severance by Ling Maud. It's one of those comps to Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel, a book that I adore and keep uh, looking for comps to it. 
Uh, but again, even though this is dystopian, so technically like a speculative book, it I think is more in line with uh, what literary fiction readers are looking for. Uh, I'm sure it's not far enough in the future to be too technologically advanced, I don't think. But anyway, we're following um, a protagonist who is dealing with a pandemic, <laughs> which <laughs> will be interesting to read about in these times, I suppose. Uh, it's about survival, but I think it's also about uh, trying to assess who you are in the midst of all of this. And my final book on this list is Love Marriage by Vivi Ganeshanathan, who is the co-host of a podcast put out by LitHub, a fiction nonfiction podcast, uh, which I listened to religiously for a while until, uh, frankly, I stopped listening to podcasts as much, <laughs> and I listened to BookTube instead. But anyway, uh, I listened to her on this podcast for so long, and I knew that she had a novel uh, out, so I decided I should add it to my TBR. Uh, so this is a story about um, a Sri Lankan immigrant family. Uh, I think it has something to do with uh, marriage rights, but it also, I think, has to do with, you know, what we uh, leave behind, but also what follows us into, you know, new countries. Uh, because I think the uh, main character has to take care of uh, her uncle in Canada, and he uh, was a militant once upon a time. So hopefully we'll be getting a lot of cultural history in this, and uh, I'm excited. And next! The last five books I added to my Goodreads TBR, at least uh, as I am filming this, <laughs> starting with Bury What We Cannot Take by Kristen Chen. This is a book about communist China. Uh, it is about a family struggling under that regime, starting with a grandmother who apparently defaces a picture of Chairman Mao and uh, her family has to turn against her or pay the price. Uh, and then the family ends up splitting up, and two of them, or a couple of them, are allowed to leave China, but one of the children has to stay behind, I guess, as a uh, testament that the rest of the family will indeed come back. So, uh, again, this will be about uh, family drama against a political backdrop this time. Then I have a couple of Jewish books for younger audiences against. The first is City of Grit and Gold by Maud McCrory Powell. Uh, historical fiction middle grade uh, taking place in 1886 in a Chicago Jewish neighborhood dealing I believe with uh, worker strikes and unrest in that capacity. And the next one is YA on Blackberry Hill by Rachel Mann. It takes place at a Jewish summer camp. Uh, the young girl who uh, is attending right now is Rena and uh, she experiences things at this camp that uh, connect her to her mother's experience at the camp 20 years prior. Then there's The Diplomat's Daughter by Karen Tanabe, which is a book about uh, multiple cultures uh, taking place in World War II, starting out in an internment camp in the U.S. where um, a young woman of uh, Japanese uh, descent uh, meets a young man of a German descent whose families were sent to a camp the young girl is ultimately sent back with her family to Japan, and she goes to Shanghai where she meets up with um, an immigrant from Austria, an Austrian Jewish immigrant who, you know, fled home because of the Holocaust. So there's a lot of relationships against uh, encroaching warfare than that background in this one. And finally, we have Trick by Domenico Starnone and uh, translated by Jumpa Lahiri. This is a Neapolitan novel, an Italian novel, uh, a very uh, minimalist, insular sort of novel, I believe, taking place with a, a grandfather and a grandson in an apartment together. Although I believe it will uh, touch upon some history uh, and, well, probably family drama as well, but at least we'll get a little bit of uh, the feel of Naples, but mostly it'll be very uh, interior in a small novel, I'm pretty sure. All right, and my final category. The majority of the books in this category are adult science fiction, which is a genre I definitely want to read more of. But I couldn't pass up the chance to at least uh, dedicate one slot to YA fantasy because I have a spot in my heart, soft spot, for YA fantasy. So I decided to go with Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. Uh, which came out recently. This is epic fantasy, my favorite type of fantasy, in another world, but there are librarians at the center of this story, so I am here for it. 
Next we have Provenance by Anne Leckie. This is part of her Imperial Rottich series. Uh, I haven't read any of the other books in it. They're kind of military SF, which I try to stay away from. Uh, this one I think is a little more about civilians on the ground. Uh, well, of a sort. Uh, to summarize, I believe it's about a young woman who is trying to regain a priceless lost artifact uh, and uh, has to go to a prison planet to uh, talk to a prisoner there and maybe spring him out. So there's still going to be a lot of uh, excitement uh, to go around. But there's also, I think, some interstellar conflict and politics, and I love that aspect too. Next is Ancestral Night by Elizabeth Baer. This one is about salvagers in space. Uh, I love space. You'll see that a lot <laughs> in these books. Uh, who uh, are looking for um, relics, uh, uh, human relics, among alien vessels, uh, and I think come across um, a bigger truth about uh, these this alien species, long thought dead, might not be so dead after all. <laughs> Returning to Earth, uh, but with an alien theme, is Tomorrow's Kin by Nancy Cress. Pretty sure I heard about this book through Rachel at Colinati's channel. Uh, this is a book where um, aliens come to Earth but like Arrival and that sort of stuff, we focus less, I think, on a military response and more on a diplomatic response, especially because after these aliens arrive, we have some sort of virus that arrives that is affecting all of us. So suddenly we're talking more about biology and scientists and whatnot and working together. And I gotta say, if aliens were to, you know, come to Earth right now, I'd probably want to talk to them about viruses and about what intel they could offer us, because presumably they'd be a more advanced species than us, and maybe they can help us out. <laughs> and finally, the last book, which technically I haven't added to my overdrive, hence the etc. at the top of the screen, uh, but it's something I've been thinking about a lot. I think I've even talked about it in a couple of videos. Uh, this is the first book of the Expanse series, Leviathan Wakes by James S. A. Corey, which has been turned into a successful uh, TV adaptation. Uh, and I've been diligently watching the TV show and uh, been growing more and more obsessed with it. Uh, and I was thought I might be able to wait until after the show was over to read the books, but now I'm thinking, why shouldn't I just dive in and, you know, get as much out of the story as I can? So now, if Rick spins number 20, I can start that journey. <laughs> so that about covers it for me now. I will leave the Goodreads links for more detailed information about all of these books down below. And I hope to be back on this channel in the near future, at least uh, sometime before the end of the month, to do a book haul and, even, and add even more books, I suppose, to my perpetual TBR, <laughs> so stay tuned. In the meantime, I'm off to celebrate Purim, a festive, joyful uh, Jewish holiday, so Chag Sameach to everyone else who's celebrating. Thanks so much for watching, everyone, and I'll see you next time.